Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hello everyone, checking in on the markets. We got CGC, APHA, CRON, ACB, TLRY, and NBEV. Interesting day today. We had an, a bullish reaction to Tilray News pre-market. They have a partnership with a pharmaceutical company, a big pharmaceutical company, but it's a little bit different than the deals we've seen because there's no capital or ownership going on. So a little bit different in that regard, but it was a significant bullish reaction for TLRY. And we could see pre-market, everybody else reacted to that news as well. But then we saw a bit of a break in correlations. And it was very clear within the first 20 minutes of trading that CGC and ACB were weaker. They hit their new low of the day first compared to everybody else as we saw profit taking initially at the open. And then we saw Cron and APHA see significant bullish reactions in the middle of the day and head up to some key resistance levels. So it was a very clear, distinct difference where TLRY had the news and a bullish reaction up 16% today. ACB and CGC were weaker and APHA and Cron were clearly the two stronger names out of the grouping. So here's CGC. We did see a little bit of a bounce at the end of the day. 28.10 is the absolute must hold support level because there's no support below it. And we dropped down to 28.31. So a bottom fishing play with that level. But we have to see follow through. We have to change the hourly trends for the bulls to prove anything. We need a bull break of 29.65 and then 30.50 to start changing the hourly trend to give us a daily higher low. And if we get that daily higher low, we'll have an equilibrium to be watching on the daily time frame, and we would look for a lower high compared to 33.65. Market is still weak. I talked about the correlation between the market and oil on Midas letter, probably aired about a half hour ago. And I'm going to be talking about that a lot in the SPY videos again. In my opinion, the market bounce is going to be dictated by an oil bounce, and that's going to dictate the Canadian marijuana sector bounce. So keeping an eye on all of those correlations together to have the complete picture as to what's going on and CGC defending support, but we need follow through to stay in this tightening daily range. If we break 2810 bearish, there's a gap to fill at 2637 as our next target. So APHA, the strongest reaction today aside from TLRY, and the reason why, in my opinion, is probably Citron. We had, I had Fidelity send an alert saying, you know, unusual call activity in APHA, and they sent that out. And then Citron's tweet comes out maybe an hour later talking about how they're going to put out their report and they say US $8 getting back to where we were before the drama is their target. So another uh, two hour, $2 of upside on the US side of things, which is a 33% move or so to or roughly. Bottom line is they've marked the top twice now. Citron has tweeted about APHA twice and that literally marks the top. We have an initial bull push that's algos and traders reacting to that coming out from Citron and that marks the top. So in my opinion, again, you have to imagine that if they're putting out any information, they are going to have already gotten their shares that they want. They're not going to put out information, see the price increase, and then look to be establishing any position. So they're in the position when they put those tweets out, and they're going to put out a report. We'll see how the market reacts to it. In my opinion, I don't expect mar much market reaction to either the Citron report nor the company rebuttal, if that's ever coming. And the reason I say that is because at this point, the market has priced in the fact that, you know, management is not going to take this head on and not going to be going on, you know, public television or, you know, defending themselves publicly in the way that we've seen other companies do it. And it's priced that in and said, all right, you're not going to do that. We realize that. And we didn't get the rebuttal last Wednesday. So the market's pricing in complacency of, of not meeting deadlines and things like that. And in my opinion, when that rebuttal does come out, I don't expect a significant reaction to it because again, the company has told us exactly what's going to be coming, a line for line rebuttal. If there's any risk, it's going to be some potential downside risk in case it's maybe not up to the expectations of the market. But essentially the psychology of what's taking place is those that aren't going to sell, aren't going to sell. They're holding and they're you know accepting everything that's taken place so far. And they've made that decision. And those that have sold are you know probably not going to buy back in because they either got burned or they sold at a loss or they don't uh, want to support, they don't want to feel comfortable with management, whatever their reason, 
The, the point is, I don't think there's many people on the sidelines right now waiting for this report to either make their decision to exit the stock or to re-enter the stock or enter it for the first time. So we'll see how it all plays out. Again, never a dull moment. When that report comes out, it'll have a high volatility impact on that day. But just in terms of, you know, breaking away from what everybody else in the sector is doing, I don't think it's going to have that significant an impact. So a couple of key resistance tests today on Cron and APH, the two bullish names. We had resistance of 875 and then a lower high at 840. And anything under 840 is a lower high. And this is the Canadian ticker. And it was a bit of a top fishing play as Citron put out their tweet and the bulls showed up and we couldn't break resistance. And then we pulled back a decent amount from that resistance. So a couple clear lower highs to be watching. Support anything above 650 is a higher low on the daily time frame. So bulls are comfortable above that support. And if we get the bull break over these resistance levels, Essentially, the most three, the most important three resistances are 840, 875, and 912. And then there's the gap to fill. And if the bulls can make it back up to the upper $10 range, that's erasing whatever happened, the drama, and we're back to a point where we were at before that came out. So a few key resistances to break to try and look towards that gap, and we'll see if the bulls are able to pull that off. But again, a bullish correlation with everybody else in the sector right now. Same thing as Cron. I was focused on Cron today, traded Cron a little bit because we we're just waiting for this daily higher low to form. And the bulls built this base of support around $11 in the US here. And we still have a triple top of resistance here as well, where we have just barely rejected 1174, 73, 72 was the top today. We were on the verge of a break. The bulls were ready to go. Spy literally broke bearish from a five minute pattern and dumped the rest of the day right when cron was ready for that bull break so cron now has a tightening range a higher low of 1132 if we break this triple top all at once look at the lack of resistance afterwards so again apha and cron both positioned really well if the market can turn things around and this is a bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern but the bottom line is if we break those 1170s we'll be looking for some decent follow through as long as the market doesn't ruin that as it has been really good at ruining any bullish attempts over the last week or two ACB, much weaker response. We actually broke the low of yesterday and key support still remains at 715 and we're looking at resistance of 806 and 831, two key resistances. So as long as 715 holds, the bulls have a higher low attempt on the daily, but they have to shift the momentum and head back to resistances to try and see continuation. Not a bad setup on the daily as long as 715 can hold and we have to see, again, market has to bounce for this Canadian MJ sector to try and bounce as well. And tomorrow is going to be a significant impact at, on Wednesday, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. The Fed's going to come out with some discussion on rates. That's going to have a volatile impact on the market. And we can expect that the Canadian MJ market will respond to that as well. TLRY sounds like a big day, 16%, but look where we're coming from. This bounce doesn't do anything. And it's actually still a bear flag potential at this point. We're going to need another solid green day of follow through tomorrow to not be a potential bear flag and we know a daily lower high is coming because anything under 104.44 is a daily lower high. So at this point, best case scenario for the bulls would be follow through, a lower high on the daily, a higher low holding 64, and then a bull break to change the daily trend. Otherwise, if we just see another weak day tomorrow, we don't get much uh, action over $80. This is a potential bear flag that the bulls need to be cautious of. And it's all about the amount of momentum we see the next couple of days and whether or not we can break more significantly from this range or if it's going to be this diagonal weak bounce after the flagpole dump. NBEV, example of a top fish today. So NBEV was a strong bullish chart on the daily time frame and an uptrend over the last couple weeks, past month really. But this is a beautiful top fishing setup where you look at the extended hours action and you say, okay, we have clear resistance from the last bull move at 694 and 695. It was a double top. So if the bulls cannot break 695, it's a rejection from resistance. We got to 690 first thing this morning, could not break resistance, profit taking started, bears jumped on it. We dropped from 690 down to 617. That is a huge pullback of over 10% on a rejection from resistance. So you make an entry as a bear first thing in the morning, you exit if 695 or if you want to give more space, seven psychological, if those levels break, you exit the trade, but the follow through the risks to reward there, you know, you're risking maybe 10 cents and your reward ended up being 70 cents. So a great risk to reward ratio for that top fishing play. And now we have an equilibrium with our high, the low of the pullback on the four hour time frame, our lower high with the inability to break resistance, 
and the bulls are attempting to form that higher low now at 617 range is tightening you could make the argument this is a cup and handle pattern but the bulls need to show up tomorrow in order for that potential to still be there so that's where we stand as we head into tomorrow again the our eyes are on the fed and the response by the market or whatever the fed says at 2 p.m eastern oil bouncing will be significant for the canadian mj sector in my opinion whether that's this month or in january remains to be seen but oil is absolutely due for a bounce and it does have a significant impact on the s p 500 which has a significant impact on the canadian mj sector continue to do good things out there we'll check back in tomorrow and see if these key breaks of resistance of apha and cron can take place and keep in mind that the amount of follow-through that we get on those breaks will likely be dictated by market strength that day thanks again we'll see you soon